Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video! In this video, we're gonna look at all of the parts of your main base in Valheim. And stick to the end because I'm gonna show you how you can have an open entrance that you can run through, but monsters cannot pass. So let's get to it. When you first go into a dangerous area to make a base, you won't actually start with your base. Instead, you'll make a little stronghold or a sort of keep where monsters can't get in because you've used the terrain, and that way you guarantee that you have a safe spot. And that's how I built this whole thing on no map mode, on maximum raid settings. I absolutely would not have been able to do that without this safe keep. If something goes wrong, you'll just respawn in here, which gives you time to build out this main base. The first thing you're really gonna need, of course, is a bed. You'll need to put whatever sort of items increase your rested bonus that you have access to, usually like a throne, a rug, a table, a chair, a bed, a banner, all this will be good. In addition, you should always have a chest filled with food right next to your bed, because whenever you die, and you will die, you're gonna wake up with no food. It's also useful to put some extra armor here because you're probably playing on the mode where you lose your body when you die. You don't wanna be running around to go get your body with nothing and no food. I also like to put some other items here that I use a lot, like the cultivator and bows and knives. Always useful to have. Another good thing to keep in mind is lighting. You're gonna need to put some lighting in your base because it actually gets kind of depressing just being in the dark in Valheim. And you already have enough darkness in the swamp. Trust me, you don't want darkness in your base. Ah, there we go. Much better. Obviously, Valheim has a lot of crafting, so one of the first places you're gonna make, aside from your bed, is a place to build things. You're gonna need your workbench area and room for all of the extensions that you have access to. It also makes a lot of sense to have your foraging area be right next to your workbench area. And in addition to that, all of this should be next to your storage area because you're gonna need to access all of your loot in order to build anything. So what sense is there running all the way to the other side of your base? Your storage area should be right next to all of your crafting. As soon as you start mining copper and tin, you're gonna need a forge. And forges are really fun. To be honest, they're one of the coolest things you can make in the base. Personally, I like to have the forges all set up so that the smelters can be accessed right next to each other and they're high up. This way, that way they just toss the metal down and you can have the metal land in your crafting area, which is really convenient. If you do it this way, make sure that you have an area where you can take the cart up and then you can just load all the metals into your forge from there. And a general rule of thumb is that for every smelter you have, you'll need one kiln. All of the metal in the game requires coal to make it. So you're gonna be using lots and lots and lots of coal. The next main base area is your kitchen. And this is a really big end game kitchen with ovens and everything and fully upgraded stuff. So yours will probably be smaller until you're, whoa, what's he doing here? Dude. Now that we've taken care of that unexpected guest, let's get back to the video. The kitchen is a really, really important part of Valheim. Believe it or not, food is sometimes more important than armor and weapons in this game. Uh, but don't get too intimidated about all those ovens and all that space. You just need to place a hearth, and this is gonna have enough room for most of the cooking stuff. You can place cooking stations that will allow you to cook 10 meat at a time, and you can even fit one or two iron cooking stations here, which will allow you to cook serpent meat and all that other stuff. You'll be able to fit a cauldron in the corner, allowing you to make all the other food items and mead. In addition to that, you'll need space for chests because food items take up a lot of space. So in general, you'll need chests for your ingredients and then chests for your finished food. Also, make sure to leave enough space for all the upgrades around the cauldron. But where are you going to get all the stuff to put in your kitchen? Well, that's where the farm comes in. But farming is a little tricky because there isn't any one place in the game where you can farm everything. So it's not that typical to see the farm also in the base. Most of the time, the farm is in a portal and you use a portal to go there. But I play on no map mode, no portals, so that's why everything is here. Technically, the best place for your farm is in the plains, because the plains can grow everything except Jotunpuffs and Magecap. These two items have to be grown in the Mistlands. 
And that's exactly why I put this base here. Believe it or not, this base is exactly on a convergence point between the Black Forest, the Mistlands, and the Plains, allowing me to farm everything and use the monsters against each other. So when the Seekers attack, I take them to the Goblins. When the Goblins attack, I take them to the Seekers. And there's always trolls messing everyone else up as well. You'll also need a fermenting area. The fermenting area has to be under roofs, otherwise the fermenters won't work properly. It's also ideal to have this be really close to the kitchen because you make all the mead bases with kitchen ingredients. I personally like to pair the fermenting area with your breeding area. Depending on what point of the game you're in, you might have boars, chickens, or even wolves. And you might feel tempted to have these animals all out in the open, but trust me, if you do that, they're not gonna live very long. So your life will be a lot easier if you just have an indoor area where you keep all your animals and make sure that it's totally contained so bats can't fly in and kill them. You'll also need a place for your honey. Personally, I like to just throw it on the wall because I always have walls and you can just run along the wall and then grab the honey this way. Personally, I play with no portals, but I understand that most people love portals. So you're gonna need a portal hub in your base. There's two different strategies you can use for your portal hub. The first one is simple. You just have each portal and you label it. This one goes to the black forest, that one goes to the center, mountains, etc., etc. As you build more portals, you just add them here. The second approach is to just have one portal, but then have a bunch of signs nearby that you write the name of your other portals. This way, whenever you wanna change the portal, you just change it into something else. This saves you a bunch of resources and can be an interesting alternative if you wanna save space. Additionally, you'll need some windmills in order to process all of your barley. I like to put these up high on top of my base. That way, they just spit them out and they fall right onto the floor. I don't know why, but I just love it when they drop things and they fall. It's incredibly amusing. You'll also need some room for some spinning wheels to process your flax into linen thread to make all of the armor from the planes. I usually like to put my spinning wheels near the fermenters just because I always have this stuff near the farm anyway and they both need to be undercover. One of the last items you'll need to add to your base is the refinery, which allows you to make all of the Mistlands gear. The refinery is a fascinating and dangerous piece of machinery. You'll have to load your fuel up into the top of it, and then you're gonna get what you want out of here. The refinery is unlike any other piece of equipment in the game because it'll actually destroy everything around it if you're not careful. You'll need to have some kind of stairs or something so that you can get to the top and actually fill the fuel. Something that works well is to build stairs into the refinery. You can do that by placing a two by one block and then another one. And then on top of that, put some stairs. This will allow you to easily just jump to the top and then fill the refinery with soft tissue. However, once you start loading the sap, this thing is radioactive. So it shoots out particles that will destroy almost anything. Just look what happens to this base if I leave this running. You see this nonsense? This thing is insane. <laughs> you can work around all this just by enclosing the refinery in some black marble. Now, something else you're gonna need is a way to survive raids. There's a way to stop raids from ever attacking your base. Because the raid monsters don't actually care about your base. All they care about is you. So what you need is a flat area right outside your base. So every time there's a raid, you can just jump out here. The monsters are all gonna be attracted to you and they're gonna come try and kill you instead of destroying your base. And now it's time for your reward for sitting until the end of the video. Look at this, there is a raid currently going on, but why aren't they coming in? Well, that's because this is magic. Look at these gaps. I can walk over them. And as soon as I'm on this side, all the monsters come and chase me. But watch what happens when I just cross over these gaps. Because this is magic monster flooring, where players and carts can cross, but monsters cannot. 
All you need to do is make a gap around this size. The gap should be roughly the same width as the wood beams are. This destroys the monster's pathfinding, so as far as they're concerned, they can't cross this, even though technically they could. Now, you have to be very careful because it's true that the monsters can't purposefully try and cross, but monsters can push each other. All I have to do is push the monster there and look at that. Suddenly, it's in my base running around. That's why it's really important to have multiple of these gaps. I recommend at least three gaps. That way the monsters, if they get pushed, they'll just get pushed to the first and then they'll actually get trapped here. If you make a long corridor like this, the monsters will push each other and then anything that gets stuck like this can't actually leave. So it's effectively a cage. If you want to support my work, consider getting your own dedicated Valheim server using my link, JP Valheim. You can also comment below if you have any tutorial ideas for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.